sounded expensive. Cut that, <laughs> cut, cut that. that. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Arzan Electrics. Today's theme is electric shocks. So I'm at an EICR and we're going to be going through testing procedures and seeing if we come across any potentially dangerous situations that could cause an electric shock. Me and Ruben may discuss our worst shocks. If you guys have had any shocks or anything like that, let us know in the comments your worst shock. Let's get into it. Oh, an hour and a half drive up here. And we still beat you. And we still beat you here. <laughs> How long was it for you, Max? 20 minutes. <laughs> so can you spot anything the matter with that, Ruben? Um, the expose. Some we'll see one of it against. straight away. That's a Wilex board. One of the ones I always bang on about. It looks like GE. MCB's plugged into it as well. A couple of screws missing. No labeling in the very description. The acoustics in here are amazing. Looks like it was an old cooker circuit started bubbling and melting. So they made it even more dangerous by exposing that live bar. <sighs> Dear me, 16 mil tails. Let's have a look in the mains cupboard outside. So the water main might be through there. <sighs> Looks like one continuous piece. It's our MET, no label. Only a six mil feed in that. We've got a loop supply here. So it'll loop into here, feed here, and go off the next door. Might not be able to upgrade that any higher than 60 amps. So we'd have to speak to the DNO about that. Sorry, mate, just want to get in, get in soaked. Is your camera waterproof? Waterproof, no. Water resistant, yes. <laughs> Is it like specs on a lens? Do I have to? <laughs> So we're just going to isolate the power and have a look at the um, switch fuse outside. I thought you were going to park all your way onto that. Oh no, I'm not that athletic. It's actually got a bit of grease on it. It's almost as if it's been maintained. They're supposed to grease the contact so it goes in and out nice and easy. So this old switch fuse has a safety device. So I've got the fuse removed and it's off. So these are all dead. But if I try to turn it on, it won't go on. So there's a little lever here. So when the cover goes on, it pushes that in, which is a safety catch to actually prevent you turning it on with the cover off. So it's, it's only a little primitive thing, but it's quite clever. So Jordan was asking about the worst electric shocks we've had, and I always go on about these fuse boards because I've had two electric shocks off of them and a short circuit off of them. I always go on about these switches. When you turn it off, you can slip and touch. This has got a cover on it. The same goes when you turn it on, you can slip and then touch the bus bar here. And I've done it both ways, turn it on and touch that, turn it off and touch that, get an electric shock. I've also in inadvertently put a link between here and the earth bar, and then turned this on by accident, which then blew the test lead up and shorted out quite badly and caught, I mean, it's just a smoldering mess. They're really dangerous to work on. I mean, the way we found it with that would have been live, so easy to touch. So I just think they're quite dangerous boards and that's why I always bang on about them. So we're gonna start by identifying our circuits. We've got everything off at the minute. As you can see, off is being shown, but it can be confusing. So the only circuit that I've got on is this one here, which we believe will be a cooker circuit because this was a shower that's burnt out. So I'm gonna turn that on gingerly. And we'll go and find it. No problem. Let's get that linked out. So I'll show you how we link out. So you can either take the carrier out and then there's a little screw here which takes this off. So you'll be left with it like this. And then you can put your shorting out lead from here to the bar. Or you can link the whole bar out. So there's a little bit that kinks out here. Out onto the bar here and then anything that's switched on effectively is linked out, but you must, must make sure that is removed after. So if you knock that on, you've got a dead short across live and earth. So we'll go and get an R1, R2 reading now. We could have took the reading at the plug, but we need to open it up for inspection anyway. And then, um, Cooker switches normally get gummed up because of their location. They get cooking grease and whatever else in them. And then the pins can give you really bad readings, which is a false reading, essentially. It's 
So now we've got the R1, R2 reading. We're gonna get our IR reading for that circuit and then we'll get our live reading for it. So I'm trying to do a insulation resistance test. I'm getting a very low reading. So I've linked the live and the neutrals together to test at earth. So it means that one of the other circuits are interfering neutral to earth. So the only way I can test this circuit individually is to remove its neutral to prove it's not that circuit. So it's whacking right around now. So I'll put it on 500. I normally do it for about five seconds, but to be honest, I think that will go clear if I hold it. One circuit's IR done. Now I'll pop it back together, liven it up, and we can get our ZS test. So I'm going to turn this back on now, um, being careful not to touch that bar. I'm 100% going to get a belt today. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you want to go and get a loop on that for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, two, seven. Right, so what you can do there, see if it's any different, you can put it on too high because it hasn't got an RCD. Point two nine. I think that's, that's worse, slightly isn't it? different. Was it worse or better? It was 0.27 before. Okay. So we've done this quicker circuit now. We've entered all the inf relevant information here. Just wanted to show you the reading. So we got 0.22 as our R1, R2, and we got 0.27. So let's say you can calculate this. So the main earth would be, um, was 0.19. So you add that onto that and it should give you that. But as you can see, the measured value is much, much lower. So in my opinion, that gives you the worst case scenario. So if it still meets disconnection time when you calculate it, it's, it means that it's, it's more than likely gonna meet it with measured. But it's just to show you that they don't actually work out in the, in the real world. That's the measured, that's the measured, and it doesn't work out calculating. People do it to speed it themselves up and they'll just do live tests, count the number of points, and then walk out to the van and that's the test done. So just, yeah, like drive-by EICRs. Yeah, I've just taken this off, but the live cables have fell out immediately in the back. So I've got to stop there because the circuit's on. I'm just uh, prepping it for testing. If I didn't have my hat on, it was my hair, I would hit that. How many points, mate? Uh, that was seven. Eight, sorry. Eight points? Eight. What's the highest reading you got? 0 0.57. And where do I leave the pad? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the ZS? 0 0.47. 57. That was the highest? Yep. You can follow me, Roops. The cable came out. Oh, yikes. Absolutely starving. I'll pass the Tesco on the way in. Mind you, how many service stations did Lunch we pass? Lunch at Max's house. Oh dear. All right, Ruben, is there anything, anything significant about this or anything you notice? Apart from the box is wobbly as. Uh, What's that, mid 70s that they got changed to green and yellow? This is one mil CPC. As opposed to 1.5. Yeah, so you see it's a, so the reading is going to be a lot higher on the CPC. Normally it's 1.67 times higher, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because of the difference in the cable, so it'd be two and a half times higher. Right. Let's get the leads on it. 0 0.42, 0 0.44, 4244108. That's about right. Is that about right? It's just over, probably. Oh, that doesn't look like a four anymore. It just looks like a blob. <laughs> See, that's quite old school. So yeah, they've gone into this, into the back box in one piece. So that's just one continuous loop of cable. So uh, that's how they used to do it. So, beautiful. Sure. Bang on, mate. 110. What we get? 108. 108. All right. So we can do our finger of eight tests. That's when the opposite ends of the ring join together. So in a perfect world, that's what our reading would be. But we're gonna go around and actually do it at each point. As you know where they all are, mate. Yep. When I'm going for inspections, I usually try and do the ones that have been changed, because it's normally a DIY job. And it's normally ones you'll find the problem at. Yeah. 
It's getting 22 ohms there. Go and go to another one. That's a very poor reading. Either it's a dodgy socket or it's a um, dodgy connection. Although we've checked the connections in there, it seems pretty good. If you're really quick, you won't get that wet. Zero point six nine. <laughs> nice. Something like t t Terry the Tester. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it needs to be an M, doesn't it? Something mega. Yeah. Mark. What's another Michelle? M? Michelle. Oh, it's a girl. Okay. I don't know. Pretty beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what other M names can we get? Should, should we ask the audience? Um, should they name the tester? Should we do a poll? Malachi. <laughs> Malachi. Yeah. Maurice. I like Maurice. I was going to say something, but <laughs> it couldn't be on video. <laughs> um, what were we doing? Naming the test. Oh, apart from naming the test. Like we were mid ring test, that's what we were doing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we had that really high reading at that socket. Yeah. Let's go and find out why that was. Seems a good connection. Still the same. Yeah, it's a really. Reckless socket. Really rubbish reading. Normally I leave my crop clips on there, have them squeezed together from a figure of eight. However, I'm getting a really bad reading at one of my uh, sockets. I'm just going to stick this in a Wago so I can free up my leads. But I don't have a second Wago, so hang on. Is... I just realised I put the wrong one in there. Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh, this is tragic. Talk amongst yourselves. 2,000 years later. Yeah, still the same. Oh, but you definitely got a good loop at this one. Yeah. 22 ohms. Yeah, we're getting an incredibly high reading at that socket. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, dearie me. So we're gonna um, put it all back together and see if we're getting a higher live reading off it because we're getting 22 ohms on uh, R1, R2. I'm on the live. See, I don't think it's on this circuit. I think it's on the kitchen. My missus always wonders what's on my hand. It's not phone numbers. Elijah asked yesterday what people's worst shocks were. Mine personally was when I was an apprentice. So I was working on the immersion heater after a rewire. So it was the last day the electrician was connecting up the fuse board. I was working away and all of a sudden I got a shock. I yelled down to the electrician saying, leave the immersion heater off. Proceeded to get my test lamps out and test live to earth and then put them down again. I then touched it again and got one of the most severe shocks I've ever had because I was kneeling on water pipes and uh, so it passed through me. It hurt so, so badly. And what happened was the electrician had connected the tails in the wrong way around. So we don't switch the neutral. We don't break it in our fuse boards in the UK. So effectively the neutral was on and we was, uh, the live was on and we were switching neutral at the MCB. I should have tested across all of the colors, live, neutral, live earth, neutral earth. And I would, it would have shown that it was on. So it was my mistake as an apprentice. However, it was the mistake of the electrician thinking it up the wrong way. Well, that really, really hurt. The only shock I've had was uh, when the breaker didn't work. So I flicked it off and then I saw the lights and whatever go off. And I just assumed that, because we've switched the whole board off, I think. And then I went to take off the socket. I was untwisting the earths. And then I must have like clipped uh, the line with like one of my fingers mm. and I was like oh but I was under a desk so I sat up I slammed my head against the desk I was like what the hell and then Corey just got giggling like you just got a shot I was like yeah I think so <laughs> check the loft and see if there's any mankiness up there because I don't know lock for yesterday okay <laughs> not fed up a bit itchy <laughs> while I carry on down here so just look for um, any JBs or anything like that yeah Yeah, Roy. What is it? So, I'm doing a 
global IR test now. Yeah. I'm trying to show you it. Oh, come on. See, I just showed you beforehand. So at 250, it goes clear, but 500, it don't, because there's something sensitive plugged in. So, see it going up? Yeah. About 22. When you put it on 500, it will go down. All of a sudden, there's something sensitive plugged in. <laughs> oh, it does just go nowhere. <laughs> Rubbish. I'm guessing that it, it did go somewhere initially. Oh dear. Was there any other class one equipment? Oh. There's only that switch in the uh, li living room, yeah. which is sorted. So I'm just uh, carrying out a Wonder Lead check. So I've got a null my lead. So we've got to get rid of the resistance of this 50 meter reel, which is 1.14. So it's now zero. I'll pop that on the earth. Stay. And leave this here. I have seen others wander around carrying this around. It seems pointless to me. If you just do connect the leads up the other way around, you can leave that here and just wander with the lead itself. It seems a lot easier. expensive. What you'll notice, Max, if it's following me around, is that I am a calamity and I bump into everything and fall over everything. I think we have said it on camera before, haven't we? I don't know. So my oh first, yeah, we must have done. My first day working with Ruben, we were in a garage and it was quite busy and there was a bike rack and it was huge. You can't miss it. It was really, really huge. And then uh, I proceeded to have the slowest, saddest fall over it. I was like, oh, and it went down really, really slowly. <laughs> You didn't even know if it was to help or... It took, it took ages for him to fall. He started falling and I turned around, I did a bit of work and I was like, John, you're still falling? <laughs> and he's oh, like, dear. and he's slowly going down. You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, it was just the silence, but just grunts. It was like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we met. <laughs> Elijah sent us out some uh, responses to the question, what was your worst electric shock? So I'm just going to go through a few of them. Grab the bus bar when trying to get the cover off. Was up a pair of insulated steps, luckily, from Hackwood Electrical. Elekin had a belt off of a plug top after unplugging it. Commercial fridge with a fault, live pins. Yeah, that's a bit iffy. A1 Electrical Services, working on a sub main at a caravan park, knelt on wet grass and grabbed the 25 mil incomer. Youch. DMH Electrical, the one Corey gave me. Ooh. <laughs> A bit salty. Huh. Oi electrical. Have you heard of them, mate? Oi. Oi. Oi electrical. Oh, why? Um, probably some Insta Spark, isn't it? <laughs> when I saw the taxes I paid as an employee versus self-employed. <laughs> oh dear. Test my electrics. Live cable from flat above came down and landed on my arm. That bad, it came out my foot. What the cable? Cheers for sending them in. Right, so we've uh, teamed up with Safe Style and they're providing us our safety glasses. You may have seen them on the channel. Because I wear prescription glasses, I need to give them a load of distance, including the distance between my pupils. And uh, just downloaded this app. Let's, let's see how it goes. Right, I will need a card and good lighting. You will be asked to remove your glasses. Hold the magnetic card. <laughs> this has got to be a wind up, isn't it? And then take a selfie. Tap next when ready. <laughs> Hold the card at the top corner only. Right. Oh, top corner only. Good. Hold oh. it right there. Now, look at the camera. Smile. And that's it. You did brilliantly. What was Very the smile? Well <laughs> Here are your results. Do I trust this or <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, Google's getting thirsty. You're not getting a review now. So apparently my pupil distance is 66 point five millimeters. Link to Safe Styles down in the description if anyone's interested. Gone back to my roots, mate. Back to the CK best testing bag. Those uh, velocity ones are a bit overrated, to be honest. Right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you fancy some more of it, there should be some videos popping up here and there. See you next time. Love you, bye. Hi, welcome back to Artisan Electrics. Today's theme is electric shocks. So I'm at an EICR today and it's gonna be, we could be sent in some, oh, let me do it again. Oh, I don't even know what I said. <laughs>